the recorder? Right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, Tommy, are you ready? Yep. yep. of a society that has failed you. Your parents, they failed you. Your teachers, they failed you more than anybody else. This failure of a society has resulted in the incompetent being you are today. The world doesn't care about your feelings. And unfortunately, most of us aren't trained for that. When I look at you and I tell you, you suck, what are you gonna do about it? After extensive research and objective evaluations of my own personal experiences, I've come with one goal in mind, to change your mindset. Though you may have been wronged in life, it is incumbent upon you to fix those errors, to become a stronger, more prepared individual, and to train your children properly. I'm sorry, uh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Allow me to explain what the problem is, the root of the problem, and what you can do to fix it. You don't always have to be a weak member of society. The problem is that we are weak members of society. We have been taught that there are no losers. Since an early age, we have been showered with praise and adoration for the mere fact of being present in an event. I remember not caring if my team won or lost the soccer tournament because there was no clear distinctions between the winners and the losers. The associations managing our tournaments did an excellent job of this because, according to them, competition is bad. Competition is looked down upon. It doesn't have to be that way, though. Even though they say that competition is looked down upon, you know, there's so many great things about it. But it's all right. You know what? This has all been caused by one single item. One cursed item. The participation trophy. We have got here as a society because of this meaningless artifact. <laughs> this damnable token that has caused nothing but problems for our society. We have been taught that there are no losers in the society, when in reality there are. There are winners and there are losers, and it's okay. According to Dr. Andrea, I believe her name is, on a debate article for the New York Times, she says that <coughs> giving a child a participation trophy only serves to teach them that losing something so terrible we can never allow it to happen. She further comments that giving a child constant rewards doesn't increase their self-esteem like advocates of the trophy would have you believe. How can you have appreciation for progress if you don't have loss? There can be no happiness or joy without sadness or depression. In the words of Hall of Fame soccer player Kobe Jones, for a video for Prager University, the pain of losing is part of what drives one to improve. 
do you want your child to grow up thinking, hey, losing is no big deal, or hey, I'm here, I did a thing. Where's my trophy? All right, fine, we've looked at one side of the story about why participation trophies are bad and why competition is good. But let's look on the other side, shall we? On a poll for debate.org on competition, 35% of people said that competition brings more harm than it does good. One of the biggest arguments against competition was that competition only serves to make us cruel, heartless competitors who build their self-esteem on the failures and the mistakes of others. They say competition brings about an inequality in society and that everything should be equal. All right, we're equals. You and me are the same in person. We're the same in social status. We're the same in economical standing. Oh wait, do you know what that is? Communism, you know, the thing that destroyed the Soviet Union. Still don't think they're bad? Listen to Dr. Jordan Peterson, clinical psychologist for the University of Toronto, when he says that when you give last place participation trophy, you devalue the efforts and the works of those who struggle to get to the top.